Groovy. That's the chainsaw. Sorry. What's going on, guys and gals? It's your boy Brad. I got the Burt Man here, the Brett Man with Good Real Hunting. I he calls e. me Bird. <laughs> I.e. Good Real Hunting 2020. Uh, we're coming at you guys today with a video. We're gonna take. We're gonna. Do, we're doing a uh, final girl mashup. Okay, so we're gonna take. Uh, we're gonna take whatever we each picked three uh, main final girl mashups, uh, and then a couple of honorable, honorable mentions we'll throw in at the end. Um, so we're going to take, uh, dudes are, dude, final dudes are a part of this as well, by the way. So, uh, final girls or dudes, either way. Um, and we're going to take them from their movie. We're going to place them into a different movie or, or, uh, universe, uh, kind of like we did with the bun, uh, video a while back and, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the comic book thing and, uh, and, and, you know, stuff like that, that we've been doing. Um, so it should be a fun episode. Uh, again, um, I know with, at least with my choices, I wanted to make them more unique, uh, a little bit more fun, uh, a little bit more crazy, if you will. Um, so I'm excited to talk about it. What about and you? I'm just and I'm just basic. No, no, yeah, Brett's got some <laughs> no, good I'm matchups just too, ladies and gentlemen. I think no, he's, I'm just messing. He's going to do really um, well. I'm excited to hear Brad's, and I and I'm excited for you all to hear mine. Um, I'm especially excited to talk about one particular matchup, but I'm going to actually save that one for last. So, Brad, would you want to do the honors by mentioning your honorable mentions? Yeah, you want to go ahead and go into that? Woo! Sure. Okay, so my first uh, honorable mention would be uh, Nev Campbell, uh, i.e. Uh, Sydney from the Scream series, uh, and I would put her in, too. Uh, you're next. Um, and again... This this is a phenomenal matchup. So I mean, it's not really an honorable mention as much as it is one of my favorites. Uh, but I think that she would do a phenomenal job as being like the you know if you put her in like if you just put her character into the movie, you're next. At the beginning of the movie, you have and again take nothing from Erin. She did a phenomenal job. I, I'm not trying to improve the movie. I'm just trying to you know see alternate matchups. Um, I think she would do a great job of of being the you know the kind of sweet. Um, you know, nice girl at the beginning of the movie, um, you know, nice girlfriend, uh, sweet. She's kind of trying to get along with the family and stuff. Uh, and then like once kind of shit starts to hit the fan there, um, like we saw her in the scream franchise. I mean, she's a tough girl. Um, she is like, she's a good fighter. She's always kicking ghost face ass in every movie. Um, like I, I think she would be good at fighting off the, you know, the bad guys in the year next movie. Um, and I think it'd be fun to see. You get the, you know, the scene with the blender there at the end, and like I could totally see her doing that. Um, and and which spoilers, by the way, we're probably going to be talking some spoilers in these movies. But you know, we we we've all seen these movies at this point, so um, I think you get the you get like the blender scene there, and then you get like uh, you know all the little traps and stuff she sets up and things like that, and and the stuff she's doing, um, the the survival stuff. I think it'd be fun to see Nev doing all that, Sydney. Um, and just seeing her in action fighting, uh, with these, the bad guys, I think would be pretty cool. Um, so what do you think? Do you think that's a pretty decent matchup there, Brett, or? Yeah, um, I think it will, uh, fit to a nice transition. Um, Sydney Prescott does fit the tone with, um, your next, which I totally agree with you. Um, Erin was just awesome in that movie. So we're not trying to, to disrespect er Aaron. Um, because again, I'll, I'll even go this, um, later on um aaron is my all-time favorite final girl so she's but, awesome oh she's so badass but with sydney prescott which i know she's i would consider her on the mount rush more of final girls uh again i would love to see her kick ass in this movie i think she absolutely will kick ass in this movie and i just like that idea yeah i think um i think it'd be cool i mean i like i mean she's honestly she's one of my favorite final girls uh, Nev is because I mean I she's got more to her character than you see in a lot of them and plus she's been in four movies at this point and her storyline has been consistent unlike Laurie Strode's and Halloween's um, so I think like all of her movies to me have all been like she grows as a character somewhat I mean 
I know I said, I mean, before briefly, like, like her character development, I mean, has been, you know, lackluster to say the least. I mean, she's done a pretty good job of developing, but she hasn't progressed a lot in the, the many years Scream has been a franchise. Um, but I think that like just getting to know her over those four movies, the consistent movies, um, I think, uh, she's definitely one of my favorites out there. And again, like I, it's an honorable mention, but I, she's one of my favorites for sure. Awesome, man. Uh, do you have a second honorable mention? I do. Um, so my second one is going to be, uh, and this one, again, I wanted to create unique matchups. The Nev Campbell one to me is probably the most ununique one that I have on my list. Um, my next one is going to be uh, Jane Levy, uh, i.e. Rocky from Don't Breathe. Um, and I know, you know, like, the movie was awesome um, and stuff, but, you know, she doesn't get talked about a lot, I don't think, but I think she did a phenomenal job. And I'm going to slap her into the Saw franchise against Jigsaw. Uh, and the reason being is because I think, I mean, you have the motivation for Jigsaw to come after her because she's breaking into houses, like, she's kind of had a life of crime um, and stuff, uh, you know, leading up to the events of Don't Breathe. Um, so Good I think, point. yeah, yeah, I think it would be cool. I think, I think Jigsaw would come after her and put her in there. And then I think she would do a pretty good job as, uh, a, pro, uh, a protagonist, uh, in a, a Saw movie, because I think, you know, you slap her in some traps, you get the motivation for Jigsaw behind her, uh, or behind the, the motivation behind Jigsaw and, um, and, and you just see her kind of kick some ass like she did and don't breathe and, uh, figure things out and get out of the trap and, and maybe progress beyond that point, I think. Uh, where you, you kind of get into the behind the scenes stuff of Jigsaw and like kind of get into that next level of, uh, of figuring things out, kind of like you see a little bit, uh, throughout the Saw franchise. Uh, so I think, I think that'd be a fun matchup to see as well. I think, and again, I, I think she was an awesome final girl and don't breathe. And yeah, I don't think we need a sequel per se, but if they do and she comes back, I would be excited about it. Well, you know, they actually did talk about doing a sequel for don't breathe. I know, yeah, yeah, that's why I said that, yeah. Which, trust me, that can half my money, because I would be so down, and I totally agree with you, that Don't Breathe doesn't get mentioned a whole lot, because I watched it for the first time last year, and I absolutely loved it. It's an awesome flick, man, and again, like, I don't think the the, the first movie was a great, you know, one-off story, um, and I know they set it up for a sequel kind of at the end, and again, I don't think it really needs one, if Jane Lee comes back, Rocky comes back, which is a, a badass name, guys. I mean, it's it's awesome. I think it's fantastic. Um, it, uh, I think, I mean, if she comes back and kind of continues her uh, her her battle, I think that would be awesome. But uh, that's beside the point. Um, yeah, I think she did a phenomenal job, and I would love to see her in the Jigsaw universe. Heck yeah, man! I again, I am so down with that. That would just be a great matchup. So. I will go ahead and go with my two honorable mentions. My first honorable mention um, is going to be Ash from the Evil Dead versus Leatherface. You can you can tell already how uh, much we're diving into the Evil Dead, which trust me, we will be getting to those reviews. Wait a um, minute, that's Chainsaw v Chainsaw. I dig that. Anyway, is that sorry. see? There you go. He got he got a little head start. See, he he's getting excited about my idea. That's exactly the point. Of chainsaw versus chainsaw, and just you know, Ash will just come up with some you know smart ass some um, remarks about uh, Leatherface and just you know fighting off against that whole Sawyer family. And I just feel like that would just be a bloody good time. Oh yeah, that would be awesome, dude, to see him freaking. Stuck in the house there, and then again, like maybe his arm gets cut off uh, in the battle with uh, with Leatherface, and yes. uh, he finds he finds the spare chainsaw down in the cellar, and he just hooks it on there, and he just yeah, and then maybe he gets a shotgun too, and I, I mean I got my arms reversed, but either way, I think that'd be pretty cool, man. That, that's a good matchup. I dig that. Oh, uh, yeah, see, dude, I'm, I dig it, too, especially just what you did just to explain the whole, like, him putting the chainsaw on the hand. Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. I I like that matchup. Uh, me, too. So um, I'm going to go with the second honorable mention, which will be Ripley from Alien. I'm actually going to take this Ripley from Aliens going up against the Predator. 
because I think that matchup would be awesome because Ripley has experience with fighting um, outer space creatures. And just to see, um, kind of like what she, I wouldn't say, like she knows what all about the Predator, but she is very adaptable and learns very quickly. And just to uh, just hear that old classic line from Pre- or against the Predator going, get away from her, you bitch. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I think that would be a good matchup, too. I could totally see her character uh, getting into the woods, too, uh, because she's smarter. She could be out there doing some kind of research, and uh, she gets out there in the woods, and then Predator shows up, killing her buddy. I mean, same kind of concept as Alien, but then she... Almost the exact same concept, really. Yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let us go ahead and go to our top three and again these are not really in any order because we all love these ideas so brad start us off okay i will i'll do that uh so my first one would be okay it's kind of a a double whammy here uh a twofer if you will it's a mr and mrs and that would be mr and mrs uh ed and lorraine warren um because i think uh you know they're they're pretty good character uh, a duo, if you will, in the Conjuring universe, and I would slap those guys up against Pennywise, the dancing clown. And uh, reason being is, I think uh, you get a lot of super not supernatural uh, elements out of uh, Pennywise, um, and they're also both. I mean, you could put like like okay, so obviously Pennywise is in Dairy Bane, okay, up in the the Northeast. Uh, you take Ed and Lorraine; they're over there investigating the Amityville house in Maine. Uh, and then they, they hear about a little town called Derry off in the distance. So there's some weird shit going on over there, like some really weird stuff. And uh, they're like, OK, we f- we figured out the Amityville situation. Let's go over to Derry and see what's going on. And they get down there. They figured all these kids are getting murdered. And uh, well, I mean, I guess they are still technically getting murdered, but it's more it's not it's not that uh, surface level. You know, it's weirder. It's super it's supernatural stuff. Um, and, and you get, uh, maybe they start getting some, 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 some vibes that there's something more going on than just kids getting, getting kidnapped and murdered. Uh, and they, they kind of start running into Pennywise and, uh, his different forms his uh, you know, and, and things like that. Um, the, the it creature itself. And, um, they, uh, they start investigating into that and they're like, okay. And they start, and I could see them kind of looking back into the dairy's past. You get the. The uh, the the fires you get the uh, uh, all the stuff we hear about in the uh, like in in, in the, uh, the twenty seven years yeah the twenty seven year thing like okay every twenty seven years this weird shit happens and they start digging into that and they dig into the past of Pennywise and Dairy and um, and I think it would just create and, and the the mythology behind Pennywise and I think uh, they find a way at you know kind of towards the end there where they they can kind of put an end to Pennywise for good. But you get a really creepy matchup with them. Like the, the kids are no longer a factor, uh, and then it's kind of just Ed and Lorraine versus Pennywise, and um, they, uh, you know, it's it's kind of. I mean, it, it'd be similar to the the second act of Penny uh, of it, uh, like the book, you know, with the adults and stuff, and uh, versus Pennywise. But the adults are replaced by Ed and Lorraine, uh, and I think it'd be cool to see their um, their research, them doing all the research and everything. Um, that would be cool, I think. Awesome. Um, and you know that Pennywise, uh, be, you know, challenges his opponents by fear. What do you think, what kind of fear he would instill on and in Lorraine? Well, you know, we saw a little bit in Conjuring 2 where uh, Lorraine was seeing uh, the, the premonitions of, uh, of uh, and of course, spoiler warning Valak. here. Yes, Vervalic. Uh, you got the premonitions of, uh, of Ed dying and things like that. And you could kind of play off of that because they, they, a big part of their characters are how much they love each other. And you could kind of, mm-hmm. uh, their, their biggest fear is probably losing one another and their daughter too. Um, so you could kind of bring her into the mix and oh, that would be excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And you get some really dark stuff with Pennywise, which I think like none of the movies, like I, I love the hit movies, but none of them are as dark as the book is, and and it goes to those places. I think you could do that with Ed and Lorraine, and I think it would be good. Um, and I think it would be cool to see, um, you know, just how dark they could go with with all that, with the fears and stuff, and and just them not being able to protect people. Um, I think that would be their biggest fear, and yeah, I, yeah, I think it would be cool. Oh, absolutely. Um, see, now just when you just mentioning their um, daughter, it's just 
that makes the whole makes the whole movie make sense when you yeah you could even have that. a thing where Pennywise tries to like because her daughter's obviously a kid maybe their daughter comes down to Derry as well and you have Pennywise trying to try like get, hey uh, do you want a balloon kind of situation with the daughter exactly and like maybe she doesn't fall into it but she tells them about it and they like that's what really gets them on Pennywise's heels is the fact that their daughter experiences this because I mean overall you know he doesn't really mess with adults for the most part. Um, so that could kind of really you know, push them over the edge to really investigate farther. I think that'd be cool. Oh, absolutely, dude. I'm I'm totally on board with that concept. And woo, woo so <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and go with um, the first of my top three. Uh, let's go with one of my all-time favorite Final Girls, Sydney Prescott, which Brad has mentioned her earlier. But this time around, I'm gonna have Sydney Prescott go one-on-one. Oh. The ultimate nightmare, Freddy Krueger. I like it. Yeah. So, um, and the main reason why I feel like that again to me, this would be a match made in heaven because they both, you know, throw little like quick jabs at each other, words wise. Like, Cindy's not going to take any shit from Freddy Krueger. Like, we all know this. She doesn't take shit from nobody. She's like, okay, you know what? Just enough with the games. Let's just let's just fight. Let's get this over with. And just their interactions between um, her and Freddy Krueger would just be just amazing. I just would love to see that matchup. Yeah, I think her and like, like she, she, she kind of has those same kind of Nancy vibes. And I think it would be a really good matchup to see her like trying to figure out traps and things and just fighting Freddy like one on one, like she does with Ghostface all the time. Uh, whether that's in the world, the real world, you name it. I think, um, I mean, it'd be cool to kind of see her fight off Freddy and um, the stuff that she would be doing. Because, I mean, she's a badass, man. Like, she's the badass, most badass of them all, um, I think. And, uh, and yeah, it'd be cool. You could, yeah, it'd, it'd be really neat. And she's got yeah. sarcastic stuff, too. So I think that would match, too, with with uh, with the Freddy's personality. Yeah, and, uh, and the one that I would choose... Um just in case you're all wondering for the Freddy Krueger, I would probably think the best matchup to go against Cindy Prescott would be the Freddy Krueger from part three. I would say even part three or part one, because yeah, those to me were the I two agree. highest Freddy Kruegers of the entire Nightmare on M Street franchise. Yeah, I agree. I think both of those would be great because you get the more serious Freddy in the first one and then the, the, the sarcastic. I mean, he's kind of starts to grow into sarcastic, uh, 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 Oh, not necessarily MTV Freddy, but he's he's starting to grow into the more fun Freddy, I guess, in the third one. And um, yeah, I think that would be a pretty good matchup. It would be cool to have Nev going against an uh, antagonist that has a personality, uh, whereas where she's fighting against Ghostface, I mean, he's got you got the phone calls, and that's where you see the the best moments, I think, between Nev and and the killers. Dude, uh, you but, could do the you know the I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy, and that tongue phone. Yeah. Boom, you could do like a little like re-imagery of that because, you know, Cindy uh, is always on the phone talking to the killer. So Freddie oh, yeah. can easily do, like, it's a, it fits. Yeah, that would be, that'd be cool. And then her boyfriend, yeah, dude, her boyfriend's freaking Billy in the first one, you know? And then he dies. Maybe it's just a sequel. Which, and then the sequel, like, maybe Billy's dead. And then you have that sequence there on the phone where they, yeah. And then at the, <laughs> it'd be like freaking, uh, yeah, he, he calls her up at the beginning. They're talking on the phone and then the boyfriend thing. That'd be cool. Oh, dude, that would be awesome. Yeah, that I I dig that. You want so, me to go with number of dose now? Number two? Nope. Number of dose. You want me to start it off? Go right ahead. Okay, so my number two is going to be... Now, this is a fun one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have Jason Voorhees versus... And you're not going to guess this, but I'm going to tell you anyway here in a second. Uh, you got Jason Voorhees. And I would say probably one of the zombie versions of Jason Voorhees. You know, seven, eight, six, one of those guys. Um, he's going to be going against none other than Mr. Uzi 9mm Arnold Schwarzenegger from The Predator. Um, and again, this kind of goes into one of our, our, our most, pre, uh, uh, most recent videos uh, where we had the Punisher going against Jason, but it's kind of the same thing. Uh, you get him out there in the woods, uh, and he stumbles across the, uh, the campground, Camp Crystal Lake, and... Um, you know, his buddies start dying and stuff. And then, I mean, it pretty much just turns into the Predator, like where it's Jason and Arnold, Uno y Uno, uh, man on man, uh, one on one, however you want to call it. Um, 
they're they're out there in the woods in the campground and Arnold is going against Jason. They're all they're, they're freaking big. They're both they're titans. They're they're freaking massive. Uh, and they're just duking it out, man. You got freaking him. He's got the Jason's got the machete, and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, let's do this. And then Arnold's like, get to the chopper. But there's no chopper because they're in the campground. So he's probably like, get to the RV. We got to get out of here now. But he's not talking to anybody because they're all dead. And uh, <laughs> and uh, you just get this freaking crazy matchup, man. And I think it'd be cool to see, like, maybe Arnold whips out the Uzi 9 millimeter and uh, starts going to town on him or whatever. Like, I mean, I just think it'd be cool to see. Uh, cause Arnold in the predator, I mean, all of his movies really, but in the predator, he's a badass and you know, obviously Jason's a badass and I could see them duking it out for some time. Um, just freaking uh, just fighting and, and he gets the mud. Maybe, I mean, he doesn't even need mud. There's no predator vision, but he's like, you know, kill me, kill me now. And it's just like, you know, I, I, that'd be fun to see, man, the, the reactions you get from both of them. Uh, with Jason uh, kind of falling around, like I, that would be cool. And he he could just put an end to Jason once and for all. Oh, dude, you're going to be so mad at me that you didn't think of this brilliant idea I just thought of. What'd you think of? When they're having this ultimate uh, machete fight, when Arnold does the big blow to the head and cuts off the mask of Zombie Jason, and that big <laughs> reveal happens, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger could easily say. Ugly motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, for how, sure. How per- how perfect. Like Yeah. That'd be cool. And then he could freaking hit him with the machete and say, stick around. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, just, you know, puts gas on him and then goes, You're fired. <laughs> but no, but on a serious note, um, I think that is a great matchup. Like they would both actually meet each other in size and brute strength. So I think that should just be a really just interesting matchup and just them just flying all over the camp, all over the woods and shoot, maybe even have a fight in the lake. I just think that Arnold would actually win. I actually would pick Arnold to win against Jason Voorhees. I think he would too, man. Like he, like, especially, especially if Jason makes his way, if he wanders into the camp uh, zone to the bakery and he picks up a cookie and then Arnold's like, put that cookie down now. And that's why they fight, ladies and gentlemen, over a cookie. <laughs> yeah, and dude, then, of that's... course, the package of the cookie would be for a cookie woman. Cookie woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, seriously, though, great idea. I would be so down for that because, you know, Friday's my favorite of the big three. And just to have Arnold Solsonata just coming in and just trying to terminate the... Jason Voorhees would just be a splendid idea. Oh, yeah, it'd be so much fun. So much fun. Oh, absolutely. So let me go with my number two. And that would, and this would actually just to me would be brute strength versus psychology. And I'm going to go with Genie from Friday the 13th, part two, going up against one Michael Myers, the shape. Okay, I like it. Yeah. And, um, and probably some of you are thinking like, well, why why is that could be an interesting matchup because my big idea for it is like you know dr loomis is uh, michael's doctor for all those years and then you know when he's wanting to leave michael alone um that's when you get genie to come in uh, with her child psychology because remember that that's how she beat jason Voorhees. so it would be really interesting to use her child psychology against michael to try you know mess him up in the head as he's getting close to killing her plus we've seen in the friday the 13th part two Ginny is so resourceful and it's one of the most popular final girls of all time too and just to see her like you know fight back against michael and it should be a great matchup, and I really, really, actually, just the more I think about it, the more I want to see it. Yeah, I like that. I think their characters go, uh, Jenny's character is pretty solid, and, um, you know, I think that'd be a good matchup. You get nice stuff. You get nice, I think you get some nice stuff out of that for sure. Yeah, absolutely, and um, just, she's so likable, too, so you can easily cheer her on against Michael. Absolutely. It'd be cool. Oh, absolutely. So with that, we are up to our numeral uno, the big matchup ideas, the ones that gets us the most excited. So, Brad, would you want to go first? Yeah, mine would be, okay, mine would be uh, Samara Weaving 
Grace from Ready or Not, and she would be slapped into Evil Dead. Uh, maybe the second Evil Dead would be best um, if you had to pick a particular movie. And I think the reason behind this, I think she was awesome in Ready or Not, obviously. Uh, it's one of the best movies from last year. Uh, and she's get, uh, you know, yeah, she was awesome. She was great. And you could take the same concept of the story and slap it in the evil dead too. She just gets married. She goes off into, um, uh, the cabin in the woods on the way out of town to the honeymoon or whatever. And they go out there, uh, to the cabin and, um, and, uh, the husband or whatever finds the stuff downstairs and you know, same setup, you know? Uh, starts reading the book, everything comes awake. And again, I'm not going to spoil anything for Brett here because he still hasn't seen those movies. But, um, and, and the, the, the freaking, the, 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 uh, dead eyed start coming out. And I could just see her, like, her, it starts things off with her husband. She turns, he turns into a, a dead eyed and then she fights him off. And there's more that you could, you could add, add in some more characters, kind of like they did in the second one. Um, and she just has this great freaking story of just becoming, uh, you know, strong throughout the the same thing as ready or not. Like she, 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 uh, she finds out more things about herself as the story goes on, um, and becomes stronger throughout the movie. And you get this freaking awesome freaking stuff, man, with her, you you basically just, you put her in the role as Ash and evil dead too. She gets the chainsaw, um, and, uh. Starts cutting his heads off, arms off, all this stuff is flying around everywhere. There's blood everywhere, freaking pouring out of every little orifice you can find, just coming in through the holes in the wall and stuff. And, uh, I mean, she's got the wedding dress on. It's covering that up. It turns red by the end of the movie. Like, she turns, she puts her sneakers on and everything instead of the, the heels. Uh, and she's running out there. She's got the, the machetes and the, the chainsaws and stuff. She's cutting arms off. And, um, and she's cutting freaking heads off of dead eyes and stuff and just, just getting more intense with the character, you know, like she did just like ready or not, but you're replacing the, the weird ass family from that movie with dead eyes. And, um, I think it'd be awesome, man. You get the, you get the, you get the, you get the, uh, the, the cabin in the woods vibe and you get her in there, just one on as many dead eyes as you can throw in there. And, uh, just total badassery from her. And at the end, you know, they can all blow up like they did in Ready or Not. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe she reads something in the book and they all explode, uh, just like in the movie. Man, uh, first of all, I just want to state, I absolutely love Samara Weaving. Um, she's actually, um, one of my favorite, um, actresses to watch in the horror genre right now. Or just pretty much in any genre, really, uh, because she just has that instant likability. Um, she did an amazing job as Grace in Radio or Not. And I totally agree with you that you can just do a lot with the Evil Dead um, world, which, again, I know I don't know a whole lot of, but just how you explained it just sounds so amazing and totally on board for. Especially, um, you can recreate um, her wedding dress, be all covered in blood and guts, and just like how um, in Ready or Not they did that. And I just think uh, just to watch her develop into a strong, powerful uh, final girl would just be awesome. Oh, yeah, dude. I think I'd be excited to see it. Uh, me too. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go with my number one. My number one. And my number one is going to be Aaron from Your Next, which my all-time favorite final girl, which we're going to go ahead and put her up against my one of my favorite or the favorite horror icon of Jason Voorhees. And easy story you can do is um she brings her and her bunch of friends and her boyfriend up to the camping ground they're going to be camp counselors which again plays easily plays into her knowledge of being a survivalist and just you know everything's just going smooth and then just slowly one by one her friends are dying i would say maybe one or two of her friends died until she knows it's like okay, something's up, then that's when she goes into full survival mode and just saying up booby traps and uh, just to see um, her and Jason just interact with each other and Jason falling for those booby traps would just be just a wild and crazy, um, just endless possibilities of those traps. Just going to be awesome to watch and just to watch her take down Jason Voorhees because I would actually think that Aaron, out of any final girl uh, that has ever been created, um, has the best shot to beat Jason Voorhees. Yeah, dude, I agree, man. She's got the survival survivalist uh, instincts. 
Um, and uh, she's just, yeah, you get the same feel as Ready or Not, uh, kind of out there. Uh, just uh, you mean it you're out. next? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you're next. Um, you get the same feel as you're next. And uh, she's out there and her friends are dying. And it's just her against Jason, essentially, just like it was just her against the bad guys and you're next. And, um, you know, I, I think it'd be cool to see. And I mean, obviously you could, Jason could set some traps and stuff like that. And then she could kind of work her way through those and, um, just kind of progress throughout the narrative of the movie, um, that, uh, you know, she knows what she's doing and, and she's not to be messed around with. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, again, those are just like my two all time favorite final girl and just, um, horror icon and i just love to see that matchup happen and plus it just makes sense um just with the survivor list just being in the camping ground and just camping knowledge just it totally fits and i think it'd just be a really fun matchup so on for that one shut up and take my money oh yeah the he, he sets up the not the booby traps the booty traps they're booty traps remember from the goonies oh yeah <laughs> oh, booty man. traps so, ladies and gentlemen, we hope um, you enjoyed our um, creative matchups, and uh, we also want to hear your creative matchups, so be sure to comment down below and let us know your ultimate final girl versus the ultimate feeling, and we just, let's get that discussion rolling. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like this video. Of course, subscribe to us. We would uh, really appreciate if you do that and says to stay updated with our content. And of course, ring that bell so you know when the new video is up and loaded and ready to go. Yeah, buddy. And, uh, and of course, um, also, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And we just love to stay interactive. We'd be happy to answer any questions you all have. And we're just um, excited to talk about movies, especially horror movies, for the month of October for Good Real Hunting. Good Real Hunting 2020. That's going to be good times. Oh, yeah. So, unfortunately, uh, th for this video, the good time will end, but we cannot wait uh, because coming very soon will be our uh, duo reviews for the Evil Dead franchise. And I, I'm i very excited for that. I know Brad is, too. Woo! It's going to be a good time, man. Can't wait. Going to be a good time. So, with that, uh, we will see you next time and be good. Be good and stay away from the party, man. The party man. The party man. You're the party man. Be good. <laughs> yeah, be good. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Hasta la vista, baby. In case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening.